Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Um, today I thought I'd show you how I made a fun fall Halloween card. This is the Spooky Village card. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with a piece of black licorice cardstock and it's 11 inches by four and a quarter inches and I scored it at five and a half. And so that's gonna make what would be a top folding card, but we're gonna turn it on its side. So now I'm going to grab the spooky fence border, also from Lawn Fawn, and I'm just going to tape this in place. We're going to create a fence for the opening of the card. Now you can see there that my die hangs over the edge just a little bit there because I wanted to try to get that full fence post on both sides. So what I'm going to do is line up my top plate on my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine right along the score line so it won't cut any further than that score line. So then you can see there that it die cut the uh, the fence. And then I just need to cut away that excess. So from that on the fold line, I'm going to use my tonic scissors from Tim Holtz. And I'm just going to cut straight down there until I get to that the top of the fence there. And then there is one little piece there that I also need to cut away from the opening on the fence. And then I'm just going to pop out all these little pieces here. And then you can see that's going to create a cute little opening for our card. Now I did feel that it was a little too flimsy, uh, even though I did use a heavyweight cardstock, and it would certainly be fine, but I decided to add a second layer. So I'm lining up my fence exactly the same way as I lined it up before. And I've placed it on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel right up at the top, just because I'm not sure how long it's going to need to be here. So now what I'm going to do is attach this panel to the uh, to the card, and I'm going to use my Lawn Fawn glue tube to do this. So I want to put plenty of glue all along this fence, all the way up to the top there, make sure I have enough of it. Then I'm just going to lay this piece right over the top of that, making sure to line them up perfectly here. And then I'm just going to press them into place, and now I can just cut away that excess. So this is just an easy way just to get rid of that excess without having to try to figure out the exact measurement here. So now I now that I have that, I feel that's nice and secure now, I'm going to use my stitched hillside borders dies. And I've grabbed a piece of light gray paper here. And I'm going to tape this one in place. And then I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to grab this border. This is a stitched garden border. And I'm going to place that on the other side and tape that in place as well. And then I can run these two through my machine at the same time. And that gray paper is a 65 pound weight paper. I just figured I'd go a little bit lighter so that the inside of the card wouldn't get too bulky. So now I'm grabbing my Distress Oxide in the black soot. And these are my Picket Fence Studio brushes. This is a soft brush. And it just applies the ink a little softer than it would with the foam applicator. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this panel here. This is going to be uh, so that I can tuck the little pumpkins in here. So I'm just going to darken up those little mounds, those little dirt mounds a little bit. And then I'm going to blend that out. So you can see that's going to fit on the inside of the card. And those little mounds are going to fit on the front of the card. So now I have another piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock, and we're going to use this panel to make our sky. So I'm going to take my Versamark watermark ink pad and a clean foam applicator tool, and I'm going to show you a little trick here. What I do to create the moon is just press this foam applicator right down into my Versamark ink pad and just get plenty of ink on it. And then I'm going to just place it where I want the moon to be on my card. And I'm just going to gently push it up and down and very slightly shifting it, turning it, just very slightly because I don't want to change the shape. I want that circle shape. Now I'm going to grab some clear embossing powder. I'm going to sprinkle that on and then tap off any excess. And then I'm going to use my heat tool to heat set this. And you can see there as it starts to change, it's going to give us this nice glossy circle. And you can see that up close there. So now I'm going to start with my squeezed lemonade distress oxide. And what's going to happen here as I apply that ink is that moon is going to resist the ink. 
And later on, we will just take a clean paper towel and clean off that circle. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and blend my colors. Now I'm going to the picked raspberry. And you can clean these brushes off on a soft towel. And that's what you saw me doing there. You can just clean it off and go to your next color. And what I did find here is as I was going around in a circle like this, it was a lot easier than with the applicator tool. I got a little lighter application, uh, a little softer application, and it was a little easier to move it around in that direction. So now I'm grabbing the Wilted Violet Distress Oxide, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just kind of going out from that picked raspberry off to the edges here. Now I did want to get a little bit up underneath the moon there, so I'm just trying to figure out where that's going to be, where that hillside border is going to be, and then I'm just applying a little bit more of that wilted violet. Now I'm going to go to my hickory smoke, and I'm just going to apply a little bit of that gray color, kind of around the edges there, and then just some over these colors, just to dull them out a little bit and kind of give it that kind of nighttime hazy look, kind of a spookier look. And you can go as dark or as light with this as you want. I just wanted to, to uh, soften those bright colors just a little bit. And then the last thing we're going to do is take the black soot, and then we're going to add that around the corners and the sides and sort of from the top down a little bit. And then you will see that I'm going to add just a few little splotches of it kind of in between here, just a few little areas, and I'm not going to blend those out because, again, I want to give it sort of that, like there's sort of a hazy, cloudy sky. So now I'm going to take that clean paper towel that I mentioned before, and I'm going to clean off that moon. And you can see how beautiful that looks. It gives, brings it nice and bright again. So now with the liquid stardust from Lawn Fawn, which you can see there, you do need to shake this well before you use it. And my Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer, which just has water in it, I'm going to place a little bit of this liquid stardust down, spritz it with some water. I'm going to grab my fan brush here, and I'm just going to spatter this all over. And that's going to give us a nice shimmery sky. And then with my white gesso, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to place a little bit on my craft mat here, my glass media mat, and then I'm going to apply a little bit of water to that, and then I'm going to spatter this as well. And that's going to give it a little bit more of a starry sky look. So now I'm going to take that clean paper towel again and just clean that a gesso off the top of that moon. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat set this. So now that that's all set, you can see you have a little bit of shimmer in the sky there, and then those little white dots which look a little bit like the stars. So now I can start to assemble this part of the card. I'm going to use my Lawn Fawn quarter inch double sided tape, and I'm going to place some tape all along the back of this. And if this panel did get a little bit warped with the water and everything, just place enough tape on there so it lies nice and flat. So I'm just lining that up. And now I'm going to do the same thing for that stitch till side border. And again, I'm just going to line that up at the bottom of the panel here. So now we'll start to do some stamping here. So these are the stamps and dies I'm going to be using. We're going to be using that little house, the two trees, and those bats. And this is from the Spooky Village stamp set. Then we're going to be using the two pumpkins from the Happy Harvest set. And then this last one here, we're going to use those three little trick-or-treaters and that pumpkin from the costume party set. And again, all the coordinating dies with these. So I went ahead and stamped everything with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I went ahead and die cut them as well. So these are all the little pieces we have here. So now with my blender, my bright yellow, and my orange, and these are my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens, 
which you know that I absolutely love. And they make blending just so simple and easy. I'm adding the uh, lighter color first, then the darker color. I'm cleaning off my blender pen just to make sure it's nice and clean. You'll know that it's clean when it goes clear. And I can also use it to remove color. So if, it, if I'm getting too much color, you can see there that I'm going to the scrap paper and just dabbing off some of the color. Then I'm going to add a little bit more of that darker color. Now with the dark oatmeal and the brown, I'm just going to do the stem and I'm just going to blend that out. And I did all those pumpkins the same way. This pumpkin here is the same exact colors. I'm just going to add co the darker color to each side and then pull each side in towards the center. Now with this little one, I'm going to color the pumpkin exactly the same as all the other pumpkins we've done already. Only this time I'm going to add my darker shadows at the bottom and the top and then I'm going to pull down towards the middle and then up towards the middle and leave that middle section across the lightest. And then here I'm just adding the shadow at the top and pulling it down. The stem is the same as before. And then I just used that brown color on his little booties there. Now with the black and the light gray, I'm going to do the hair. I started with the light gray. I'm just adding a little bit of black and just, just make a note that the black a little tiny bit goes a long way. So you can see there that I'm cleaning it off my brush as I kind of go along. And then with sugared almond pink and the flesh color, I'm going to do his face and his uh, hands and legs there. And I'm just adding a little pink to the cheeks and then I'm going to blend all of that together. Now with the light gray, I'm going to do a little bit of shadowing on this little mummy here. Just a few little areas along the edges of those uh, bandages there. And then I'm just going to pull it down. And then I'm adding a little bit of that flesh color to his face and a tiny bit of the pink to the cheeks there. Just that little bit that's showing. And I know this is hard to see on camera, but in person you can see the shadowing. Now again, I'm going back to the black and I'm going to do her little witch's hat. And I am going to keep that center portion the lightest. Now with yellow and mustard, I'm going to do her hair. So I'm starting off with the yellow and I'm going to add a little mustard up underneath the hat there and just kind of like underneath her hair there and just blend that together. And here I wanted it to be just a little bit darker so I'm just going to add a little bit more of that darker color and pull it down. Now for her dress, I'm going to use the purple. And I am going to leave her dress the lightest in the, in the middle. So you'll see that I, I need to remove color because it was getting dark. So I'm just going to that scrap paper to remove that excess color. And I'm just using the black on her little booties there. And then for the skin, I'm going to do the same thing we did with the others. And then for that little uh, ribbon on her hat, I'm going to use the orange and blend that out. 
Now for the little house, I'm going to use orange, black, light gray, yellow, and dark oatmeal. And as always, I have all these colors listed uh, below. So just check below for the complete list of supplies, and you'll see everything there. So for the ghost, I'm just adding a little gray there, and then some brown on the little boarded up window here. And for the door as well. Now for the roof, I did use the orange. And what I'm going to do here is just blend out the orange. And then I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And I'm going to come in a little bit later with some black just to give it a little bit more of a spooky look. So I'm going to do that on all of the uh, roof lines here. I'm going to just get these done and then let them dry a little bit because again that black does a, it does seem to go a long way. So I want to make sure these aren't too too wet before I add the black. Now I'm going to do the house with the black. So again, just a little tiny bit up underneath that roof line there and then I'm just going to pull that down. And I just think this little house is so cute. All these, all the little houses in this stamp set are adorable, and you get quite a few of them. So they're fun to build an entire scene with. And again, here on the roof line, and then pulling that down. And then for the little uh, porch, I'm just using that brownish color again, and I'm just going to blend that out. And then I'm going to use the black here on the steps. And I do want to keep that the center of the steps the lightest. And here's where I started adding a little bit of my black. I added a little bit to the door, just sort of down towards the bottom, and then just pulled it up just to give it a little bit more of an uh an aged look. And now you can see here I'm going to do the same thing with the roof. And again, a little tiny bit of black on the side, and then I'm just pulling it in. And I think that gives a nice effect here. And then I'm just adding a little tiny bit of orange in the corners of these windows just to just to give them a little bit of a shadow here. So now with the oatmeal and the brown, I'm going to go ahead and do all three of these little trees. And I'm going to have the shadow be towards the left and then I'm going to pull it pull that color over towards the right hand side. So I'm kind of lifting the pen as I go here and pulling towards the right. And I'm coming in with another layer of that darker color. And then I decided it wasn't dark enough, so I'm going to do the same thing I did with the with the house. I'm going to add a little bit of black here just to give it a little bit more of a spooky look. And I'm going to do that for all three of those. So again, I decided to do the black on the tops of the pumpkins for my little pumpkin patch. I thought, you know, the pumpkin patch is in the nighttime, so I thought I'd add a little bit more of a shadow to those. But I did let them dry first, and then I'm just pulling in a little bit of that color. So here you can see everything colored in. And now we can start to assemble these. So the first thing I want to do is create my little pumpkin patch here. And I do need to glue these in before I attach this panel to the front of my card. So I'm just kind of positioning them in place where I think I want them. Then I'm going to add a little bit of my glue tube here and glue these in place. So 
So now that those are all set, I can go ahead and attach these with my double sided tape. And then I can attach this to the front of my card. I'm just putting a little glue on the tops of those pumpkins as well, just so they'll lay flat here on the front. Now I'm going to add my little trick or treaters. And for the little witch, I'm going to pop her up a little bit. So I'm using my Scotch foam mounting tape. And I'm only going to put it up about maybe three quarters of the way because she's going to show through on the other side a little bit. And I don't want that tape to show through. And I don't want it to stick when we close the card either. So I'm just putting it up, just like I say, maybe about three quarters of the way. So double check that when you're attaching these. You don't want to put glue all the way up to the top there. I'm going to do the little pumpkin uh, trick or treater uh, flat on the card, and then I'm going to pop up the little uh, mummy here as well. So I'm just adding a few little pieces of foam mounting tape there, and I'm going to pop him up. Now they're going to be holding these little trick or treat bags here, so I'm just putting a little foam mounting tape so that on the mummy and the witch so that they'll be flush with those because I popped those up before. So I just want it to lie flush. And then I'm putting a little bit of glue right on the handle part there. So now that's good for the outside. Let's go ahead and do the inside. Just gonna attach this house on the hill just flat here with my glue. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the trees. I just didn't want it to get too bulky back here. And then I have die cut these three little bats and I'm going to go ahead and attach those. And you'll see here in a minute um, after we do the, I did die cut one more bat afterwards to do uh, next to the sentiment. And you'll see that here in a minute. So let's go ahead and do the sentiment on the inside of the card. So I've placed it in my Misty Stamp Positioner. And I'm going to take the Happy Halloween, Have a Spooktacular Day. And these two stamps are the exact same length. So I'm just going to butt these two right up against each other. But what I do want to make sure is that it's not going to show when that gate is closed. So I want to double check that and make sure that when the gate is closed, the sentiment's not showing through to the front side. So I'm checking that one more time there. Now I'm going back to my VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I'm going to go ahead and ink up those stamps. And there you can see how cute that is. And now I've got that last little bat, bat that I did stamp and die cut off camera. And I'm attaching that there right next to that little sentiment. Now I've taken my Jelly Roll white gel pen. And I'm going to go ahead and add some highlights to all these little images. And as I've said before, sometimes if, if you didn't feel like your blending was perfect, sometimes this is a good way to camouflage things. Just add a little highlight here and there, and it'll give you that highlight that, you, that you're looking for. And then those little mounds, I thought, looked really cute with a little highlight on those as, the, as well. So do as much or as little of this as you feel comfortable with. But it's really easy to do. So there we have the completed card. We've got some sparkle there in the sky. And I just think these images are so cute. It's just a fun little fall Halloween card. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. And thank you so much for visiting today. I hope you all have a great day. Bye bye.